Hey, it's some old guy coding again, and the uh, the wife gave me a project to do. She wanted some shelves around the living room and one in the kitchen. So uh, here you see the final result. I used a couple pieces of red oak from Menards. I, I think they're eight inch uh, uh, wide, and the top one's like a inch thick, and the back one's a, a half inch. Just trying to save some money there. And of course, my CNC machine is too small to cut those, but we're going to focus on the uh, corbels here. I think that's what they're called. And you can see here I was in uh, the draw program, and I had laid this out with a couple of straight lines and a couple of bezier curves. And then I just mirrored it for the other one, trying to get the most uh, I can out of a piece of wood. In an ESTL cam, it was a pretty simple setup. I used a quarter inch end mill as opposed to what's selected in this picture here and uh, put holding tabs on. I clamped down a piece of fiberboard to use as a waste board for this project. I know there's a big hole there, but that's okay. There's some on the other side here that supported the boards in the end. And I cut the uh, pattern into the uh, waste board just so I could align the uh, oak. Um, where it was supposed to be to get the most out of uh, this piece of oak. The oak was uh, widened, just barely wide enough to uh, get the part out of. So it, uh, I had to be very careful about the, uh, the positioning. So I did my first test cut in pine, and, and here I'm showing uh, the uh, uh, repair plate uh, that you can get from NARS there that I had some laying around. I was short on clamps. I was printing some at this time, uh, some additional ones. And the old adage, you know, measure five times and cut 27, something like that. Uh, these were way too large, so I had to go back and edit the files and, and size them down a bit. Way too large. So here's my first cut in oak, and uh, it worked well. I just I won't bore you with all six cuts of this, but uh, um, the size is corrected now, so you can see they're a bit shorter. Alrighty, so I've got six of these guys cut out now. I've got some burning on there where I sanded down at some of the tabs, but you know, that's not unusual on oak. It's easy to burn that. That's, that's fine. So now I want to practice uh, the uh, positioning this for the rows that uh, my wife wants engraved into it. So I'm going to just, uh, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is change to laser. Okay, so I've got the laser attached now and it's all the way down in the corner here. I'm just going to manually burn myself a line there so I know where I'm at. Alright, it's on high and I'm just going to slowly pull this guy this way just to make a line in the, in the board there. Doesn't even have to be a good line. There we go. Alright, I'm going to go over here real quick and make a line that way just so I have something to line up with. Just manually moving the laser, perfect. Now I'll just turn that off. So my wife had picked out a rose that she wanted engraved on each side of the, the corbel. And here I'm cutting it into the scrap board just so I can uh, position my piece of wood properly. And there's the first cut into oak. Of course I had to do this uh, on all six pieces on both sides. But uh, I won't bore you with all those jobs. So here we are in the middle of finishing. I did assembly with uh, um, combination um, countersink bits and uh, some Torx screws. I, I like Torx now, everything is Torx. Um, and I used a uh, um, aged oak finish, which is a little bit darker than what I wanted. I think it's mostly, it's a gel finish and I wasn't quick enough of getting it on and, and wiping it off. Um, so they're a little darker than I had intended. But overall, it uh, came out pretty good. The wife is happy with them, so that's the important part. Thanks for watching.